All right, we begin our discussion of fluids with a definition of pressure. So pressure, very simply, is a force divided by an area. Okay, so the SI unit for force is a newton. The SI unit for area, remember, area is like length times width. So that's meters times meters, so that gives us meters squared. Okay, but we don't use a newton per meter squared. We rename it a pascal, just like we renamed, you know, the kilogram meter per second a newton. So we rename it a pascal. So pascals are really the SI unit for pressure. Okay, so air pressure, our normal air pressure, just the force of the air on top of us right now, is 101,000 pascals. What that means is there's 101,000 pascal or newtons on every square meter of your body. And your body has a surface area of one and a half to two square meters. So that's a lot of pressure. So if we go to outer space, there's we're missing all that air that's squishing us in. And so we tend to swell up and all the gases in our body will come out and so that's bad so that's why they wear pressure suits when they go flying so air pressure you know here you are your little body okay air pressure actually pushes you from all directions okay and so you have all these forces in all these different directions and this force cancels out that force, that force cancels out that force. So the air pressure itself does not make you move. But it does make things like planes move. But we'll talk about that later. When talking about pressure, you really, really, really need to pay attention to units. Because a lot of times we're given that our object is a square, like a book. Okay, so maybe it's a book sitting on a table. A lot of problems sitting on a table and they'll give you the dimensions in centimeters so it might be 26 centimeters so you need to make sure that you change that to meters or you might be given the radius of the circle and a lot of times that's only like six centimeters or it might be like one centimeter so pay attention to these units and make sure you convert this to meters before you do any other work make sure you change them before because the conversion from centimeters squared to meters squared is not as simple as, oh, there's 100 centimeters in one meter. Let's just move the decimal place two places. Because, look, we only have one centimeter here. We have two centimeters here. So we actually have to do this. Oops, that was good. You like that? Let's write that correctly. <clears throat> we have to do this twice. So this centimeter cancels with that one, this centimeter cancels with that one. So really, you're not dividing by 100, you're dividing by 10,000. And that's not an easy number to remember to begin with. So if you make your conversion before you do the math, that'll make your life easier. Some area equations you want to know. You want to know the area of a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle, that's easy. You've done that a jillion times, length times width. Okay, area of a circle. Okay, we often get that one confused with our um, circumference, pi r squared. These are the two biggies that you're going to use. So make sure these get on your equation sheet. I know they're easy, but you know, in the pressure of a task, you're going to say the area of a circle is 2 pi r, and that's just not what it is. So what about that book problem? Okay, so we have a book laying on a table. There's our book. It's laying on our table, and they want to know what pressure the book exerts on the table. So let's say our book is 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Nice, easy numbers. Okay. 
Remember, pressure is force over area. So there must be some, something else we need to know about this book. We need to know that this book has a mass of, a, let's say, one and a half kilograms. Okay, so we need the force. Do we have a force in here anywhere? No, we don't. But we do know the mass of the book. Can we find a force from the mass of the book? Yes, we can, because what force does the book exert on the table? The force of gravity, or its weight. So the weight of the book is equal to its mass times 9.8. So its weight is 1.5 kilograms times 9.8, and that comes out to 14.7 Newtons. So now we know the force that's being exerted. That's going to be 14.7. Now we need to find the area. What shape does a book make? Oh, look, it's a rectangle. So how do we find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. So <coughs> change your centimeters to meters. So this is 0.2 meters, 0.25 meters. So a lot of our areas really, really small numbers. It's going to be like point something, point oh something, point oh oh oh. I mean, sometimes it'll be like 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5. Some of our areas are going to be very, very, very small because we're talking about square meters. Okay, and if you talk about something the size of a penny, okay, compare that to a meter. It's not very big. So let's think about, does this answer make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Is this going to be a small number? So 0.2 times 0.25 is point point oh five square meters got that point oh five square meters did you do it on your calculator point two the length times the width point two times point two five is point oh five and then we go ahead and we do our pressure calculation and we take fourteen point seven divide by point oh five and we get that our pressure is 294. Now, what's the unit for pressure? Correct, pascals. 294 pascals. So, what did we have to do? We had to find the force, so we had to find the weight of the book. We had to find the area, because pressure is force divided by area, and then we took that force and divided by the area. Actually, one of the very common uses of force, and this is Pascal's principle. Basically, you can apply a pressure to a large area, so you can apply a force to a large area, and then have that force be transmitted via some sort of fluid to a small area, or vice versa, because most of the time you want to apply the pressure here or the force here over the smaller area because this is what they use to lift cars you apply you know a hydraulic jack you push on the small end and that causes you to be able to lift the big end and here's the really cool thing is that the pressure on this side is equal to the pressure on this side so how do we find pressure, remember? Force divided by area. So the force divided by the area of the big one is equal to the force divided by the area of the small one. And so basically, the pressures are the same, so the forces are proportional to the area. Now again, remember what we said about paying attention to your units. A lot of times, these areas here are given in centimeters. So, not if you're going to lift a car, but you also um, apply a force to a syringe to get the liquid to go into a vein. Okay, so if you're a doctor, you have to kind of be careful about how much force because you're applying this. If you think about what a syringe is like, okay. The syringe has a big plunger, well not a big, big plunger, but then it's got a little tiny needle, and so the area on this end is really, really small, and the area on this end 
is bigger. So you have to kind of be careful about how much force you apply here because that's going to tell you how much force that's going to come out here. So that's why when you actually watch a nurse do this, they actually do it very slowly because they do it very slowly because they don't want it come, shooting out, squirting out the other end too hard. Okay, so that's the very basics. I'm not going to do a sample problem here because it's going to make it hard but or too long. But there are many, many, many problems like this on your pretest. So they're not hard. The hard part, though, pay attention to your units. Pay attention to your units. Make sure that everything's in meters. All right. So good luck, and there's more to come. This is only step one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.